The country's farmers are bringing in this year's corn and soybean harvest, which in some places might be a little wetter than usual. Coupled with lower than hoped commodity prices, that could lead to drying and storing the crops. Earlier this week, we talked with North Dakota State Extension Ag Engineer Ken Halavang to learn more about ideal conditions for storing this season's harvest, starting with soybeans. Well, soybean storage really isn't that much different than, than storing other crops. Uh, we really encourage people to think of it as starting out in the field, making sure that we're harvesting uh, mature soybeans, that we're harvesting at an appropriate moisture content to go into storage. And then once it's in storage, uh, that we monitor and control the temperature of those stored soybeans. We really uh, want to look at an aeration system in all of our storages and use that aeration system to, to cool the beans down as we go through the fall. What's the ideal storage temperature for soybeans, Ken? Well, I normally uh, recommend that we bring the temperature down to near freezing. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind with, with soybeans or any of our more fragile uh, products is that the colder the, the grain kernel, the more susceptible to damage when we're handling. Uh, however, from a storability standpoint, cool is better. And so uh, if we have the opportunity to bring the temperature down to near or just below freezing for winter storage and then run the fans again, bringing the temperature up a little bit just before we were hauling those beans out, that would be ideal. If for some reason you would have to put a lot of heat on these beans, uh, tell me about the dangers in cracking that you might encounter. Yeah, anytime we run uh, soybeans through a high temperature dryer, uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, typically you'll see temperatures running somewhere between 130 and 160 degrees listed for commercial soybeans. But if we're drying at those temperatures, we're going to see a lot of breaks and splits uh, to the seed. If we're concerned about uh, maintaining seed coat, if we're concerned about the number of splits, we really need to back off on the drying temperature. Uh, ideal guidelines are to, to keep the humidity up around 40%, which would then mean that if we're going food grade soybeans, uh, something where we need to make sure that we're maintaining that seed coat, we can't warm the air more than 20 degrees. But for commercial grade, uh, to get the beans through in a reasonable time frame, uh, typically we're looking at something in that 130 to 160 degree plenum temperature. Let's move into corn. Uh, first of all, how much can it dry down at this point in the season each day in the field? Corn field dry down rate is going to depend on a number of factors. Once it reaches maturity, then we start to dry down. But uh, the outdoor temperature, the amount of solar radiation that we have, uh, wind speeds, all of those things will affect the rate of dry down. And so uh, we might only see uh, a couple points, maybe three points, of moisture removal per week uh, if we have normal, reasonable temperatures. But kind of a rule of thumb that I say is that usually the first part of October we can get some pretty decent dry down in the field. We get later into uh, the latter part of October, uh, the potential for field dry down really starts decreasing. And what's the optimum moisture and temperature for corn uh, as you store it over the winter, Ken? That is kind of a variable question. Uh, if we're taking it to market, uh, they may go with a 15.5% moisture. That's safe for overwinter storage. Uh, however, if we are caught with, with high moisture corn, we can safely store uh, 18, 19, even 20% moisture corn over the winter as long as we're able to keep that temperature down near or below freezing. Uh, if we're further south and we're looking at, at warmer temperatures, 
Uh, surprisingly, there's a, a big difference between storing corn at 30 degrees versus 40. So uh, as we look at Nebraska conditions, you're probably needing to be closer to the 15 and a half for over winter. Anything that is going to be stored into next summer, though, will need to get down in that 13 and a half to 14 percent moisture before we go, go into summer storage. All right, Ken, to close out with here, is there, a, is there an easy way to determine the cost of all this drying this harvest? We have some rules of thumb for determining what the drying cost will be. Uh, it really depends on what the, uh, the propane price is and the efficiency of the dryer. For years, we've kind of used the rule of thumb. You take 0 0.02 times whatever propane price is on a per gallon basis and that would then give you what the cost would be to take off a point of moisture. So for example, if we're looking at $2 propane, take 0 .02 times that and we're looking at about four cents per bushel per point of moisture removal. With some of the more energy efficient dryers, uh, we're going to be able to, to maybe go with about 80% of that number, uh, but it really depends on outdoor temperatures and a variety of things. So it, it's always a ballpark guess, but that'll give us a rough rule of thumb for determining the cost for the propane part of drying. 